All right, come to your mat. Find your space on your mat, your presence here. Feeling the engagement of this power yoga class allow the head to come down. And hold on to the knees, allow yourself to lower in, curving the back. Feeling that spine release. And lift the body back up. Touch the hands out and exhale. And take a powerful inhale. Press the hands tightly on the top. Exhale, release. Ujjayi breathing. You're keeping your mouth closed. Inhale back up. Load that air at that hitting time. Pressure the hands. Exhale, release. Feel that breath swirl in the throat. That Ujjayi breath of fire. Inhale back up. Exhale, release. Add the chin to tuck down, releasing the body into that lowering range of motion in the spine. Inhale back up. Personalize that release. Feel the shoulder blades, feel all of your skills and assets for your yoga, the breath. Inhale back up. The power of the lat muscles in the back. Exhale out. Inhale one more time. Bring the hands down the center. Pressurizing the hands, balancing left and right. Tuck the chin, find a drishti right there on the floor in front of you. And inhale back up. Take that wide release now. Feel the motion of the shoulders, the lengthening, and the muscles in your back, giving that down season. Inhale up. Coming down to the center again. Balance left, right. Pressuring. Tuck the chin down. All the air's out. Empty the belt. Inhale back up. Exhale out. As we do sun salutations, you can choose which way you want your arms. Inhale up. As a sun salutation, you can bring the hands down to the middle to go to the floor. Inhale back up. Or you can choose to let those arms release wide, feeling the lengthening and the back muscles releasing through that. One more time, inhale up. Last one, down to the center of the body. Full exhale, push the air out with the belly muscles. Inhale, full load of air. Exhale, release, bring those hands around, pull into the knees, plant the hands on your mat, square off the knees and hands, lift that back up, take that cat position, maybe tuck the toes right now, shift the body side to side, opening up from the ribs and the armpit all the way back to the hips, allow the body to shift side to side, adding on next a cup, an up and down motion, cat, curving the back up, and down, curving the back downward into cow, full range of motion with the spine, and take just a full breath, a few breaths, to do whatever you want. You can continue with cat and cow. You can open up each of the sides if you'd like. You can add legless if you're wanting to warm the legs up and you want to get those kicks going. This is your personal time. If you've been in yoga, you can add the leg lift with the arm extension. Either way, take a breath for each event. Inhale, the leg is up. Exhale, the leg is down. That breathing pattern of motion, inhaling when lifting and rising, exhaling when returning to a solid base, powers up your whole yoga program. If you haven't done so yet, you need to get into those leg lifts because you're going to want to tune those up. If you're a beginner, you can just hold the arm steady and just kick those legs out powerfully engaging all the way through the heel as you go side to side. Feel that powerful extension, full leg engagement, the quad, the glute, and the heel is giving a little upward motion. And you've got that breath going. We're going to take an active child's pose. You've got the toes tucked in the back. You're bringing your knees out wide. You're settling the hips into that wide V. Your hands are working straight out from the shoulders. You can see your finger, your middle finger lead. That's how you want your down dog hand position to be. Is that spread out fingers, the middle finger pointing towards the front. You lower your head down. You might be on the forehead. You might be lowering all the way. Turn the head to the side. Get your cheek to the floor. And see if you can get your chest all the way to the floor. This is a child pose, but you've got a melting heart. And you can feel those shoulders having to release because of the depth of the chest onto the floor. A lot of advantage can be gained just by doing this. 
So if in the Power Yoga program you get too tired, do that melting heart thing. You'll be good. Bring your forehead back. Lift the arms up onto the fingertips so the elbows are above the ears and tuck the chin in more and more of the chest. You can feel that variation of active child's pose to help your shoulders in their flexibility. Hence, you're able to take a break and rest and still get some different advantages. Always it's acceptable to just do basic child's pose and take a rest. That's all fine. Something that if you choose to do, there is no yoga but your yoga and what you feel your body needs and you want to do. Let's go ahead and bring those hands back, pulling out of this. I won't return to that child's pose. I'll mention it and pull to full down dog. I'll mention it, but it's up to you to choose that alternative at different times in the yoga practice. And this is a traditional down dog we're working. We'll have this in our sun salutations. Soften the knees and push the head through the pocket a little bit. See if you can maximize, get that head below those arms, working that shoulder down dog flexibility. And then straighten those legs, traditional down dog. You have the quads engaged, gazing point is at the thighs. And you've got that middle finger pointing to the far side off the front of your mat. And you're trying to get those heels down if they'll get there. Sometimes a little pedaling, especially if you're not warmed up, can help release the hips, the quads, and the calf muscles to help get that foot down. And let's soften those knees now. Look to the hands and walk, tiptoe, or even jump those feet up. Exhale, release into a gravity fold. Take the feet a little wider. You can hold on at the elbows, allowing that body release. A little sway side to side, I find very soothing. Also alternating, bending the knees. Especially exhale the air out, push the air out with those lower abdominal muscles and feel that emptiness allowing you to fold deeper into that gravity fold. And then breathe again. The inhale loads up, you feel the ballooning out of the body, and the exhale gives you complete um, exhale and emptiness of air and an increase in the fold. A little sway to the side, attention to how the big toe connects as you sway to each side, because that big toe sets up always in a shift for balancing, and you're going to bring that big toe in as much as you can. Go ahead, walk the hands up the legs, take a half lift. Push those shoulders away from the ears, lengthening out the neckline there, feeling a flat back feeling. Exhale, slide back down, let yourself collapse again. Add a little more aggressiveness to that side to side motion on that sway. Take one more half lift. This is part of the sun A salutation. Get those ears away from the shoulders right there. Feel that lengthening of the neck. Use the muscles in your back, release back down. Let's take a wide out, open heart stretch. Heel toe the feet out so your big toe's on the mat, little toe's off the mat. And you're gonna take your um, right hand and you're gonna grab onto that left leg and then you're going to open up and take that left arm up high. And then you're gonna open it all the way up if you can. Exhale the air out. That emptiness allows just that much more rotation. Release down, take that swing again, swing side to side. Legs are fairly wide. You're feeling those calves and hamstrings loosen up a little bit. We're headed for the other side. So you're taking the left hand to the right leg. You might soften that left knee if it's a little causing problems over there. Get that arm up in the sky. Exhale the air out. Release down, take that side to side sway. We're going in for one more round on these. So you're taking that right hand to that left leg. You're softening that right knee maybe to give yourself the ability to rotate. Feel that point in the back, that shoulder blade pulling towards the back, helping you open up and release back down. Sway side to side. Let it go. Happy, happy thoughts. This is awesome. You're in yoga. Going for that other side. Take that left hand on that right leg and open that heart up. Go for the Nice, release back down. Bring those legs back in. And now go and bend at the knees. Go into a squat position. If you're not used to squats or your squats are a little weak, go on, hold on to the legs. If you're a power squatter, the hands are up here or here, and you're going to just power in the legs. Either way, 
This is power yoga, so I'm showing power. But if you need that extra support, you're tuning up those quads, you're firing them up, you're wanting those quads to be activated for the whole class. And each sun salutation we do, you're going to lower down, you're going to feel power, exhale all the air out, and inhale strong, coming vertical all the way up. Flex those quads when you're going, because it makes them engage. And exhale, release some CT. We're going for our sun salutations. A, inhale up, exhale fold, inhale half lift, exhale going for plank, hands are down, feet are moving back, you're lowering through, you could do these planks with your knees down and take an up dog or cobra, or even floating up dogs more active and tuck those toes going for down dog. First down dog of this sun salutation, you can add the different flavors. If you're working on handstands, which are uh, my power yoga people are doing, you might, instead of just doing traditional down dog, extend up and take a three-legged down dog position. If you're already wanting to fly, go ahead, lift off. I'm going to add that next time. Switch the legs out, right legs down, kick that left leg up. Feel yourself pushing out of the base of the palms with that leg back there, full extension. Nicely done. Let's finish this A. Soften the knees, lift to the hands. Step walk or jump the feet out. Exhale, power base position. Inhale, strong up. Add that pressure on top. Crescent if you like. And exhale, some the CT. Number two, inhale up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Release into plank. Hands down. The feet are going back. You're lowering through that chatter. The elbows are in. Taking up dog. And tuck the toes. Take down dog. Second down dog. If you want that lift off, you lift the right leg, you keep that L. Look at the hands. Strong, straight arm extension and a little hop off that left leg. Just a couple. Letting yourself lift off. Swap out. And you're going to take that L. Right leg, left leg makes an L or a right angle there. And you're just going to bend and softly hop off that right leg two or three times. Working to find some hang time. Nicely done. And let's work through this series. Soften the leg, look to the hands. Step, walk, forward, jump, flex, feet up. Exhale, power base, inhale, rise. Nicely done. Every time crescent is an option, exhale, some stitching. And inhale, right back up. Number three, exhale, fold. Half lift, release into plank. Hands are down, feet are back. You've lowered through chatter on the up dog. And tuck the toes into that down dog. At this point, you can add those hops by taking the leg up. You could stay stationary down dog, or if you are in a fairly um, physically challenged position, you can drop down to that child's pose. Keep the toes tucked so you can come right back out of that and join in if you want to. You can take one of these off because we're going to be doing several sun salutations and you might want a little vacation right now. Soften those knees, look to the hands. Step walk or jump those feet out. Find that exhale, power base, inhale. Let that air lift you. You're rising, your hands are there, your crescent is there. Exhale, some speechy. And we go again. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Half lift. Release into plank. Hands down. Feet your back. You've got that chaturanga. Up dog. Tuck the toes, take down dog. Again, you've got your options. You might be taking the legs. You're maintaining that L position, hopping off that left toe. You don't have to top, have to fly up very high. Just a teeny bit off, and you've got that lift off pattern happening, and it can improve as you go along. Let's see. finish these series. Soften the knees. Look to the hands. Step walk. We're jumping up. Exhale base. Inhale rise. Feel that happy feeling whenever you rise. You need that. Exhale, summon CT. Last A. One breath each. Move. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, comes plank. Charter one minute in. Inhale. And exhale, down dog. That was one breath for each motion. I call that the full speed Ashtanga program because in a power primary series, you have one breath. So we'll be working that speed again at any point in time. Take one of these off. We're going to be progressing to Sun Salutation B Series with the Warriors. 
on the right side and the left. And we'll take just a few extra breaths through that warrior. We're releasing out of this final A. Look to the hands, bend the knees, step, walk, or jump out. With an inhale, exhale, release to that base, and inhale to the sky. Pressure the hands, and exhale, samastiti. Sandhi, start with a sweeping utkatasana. Sweep off the floor, sitting down in that chair, feel that pressure and quad. Exhale, fold, hands are coming down that floor. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, releasing to plank. Hands down, feet are back, chaturanga, and flow up, 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 up. Exhale, take down dog. Right side warrior. A little lift, sweep that right leg through. Find that base. You might use the hand. Inhale strongly and settle into your perfect warrior on the right side. Use that drishti. Use that breath. Switching out the legs. Here it comes. Hands are down. Right legs back. Releasing through that chaturanga up dog. Tuck the toes, take down dog. Time for the left leg. A little lift. Sweep that leg right there by the hand. You might need to help it get there. Coming up with that inhale. Hands are up. Feel that energy. A few strong breaths. Make sure you have that back leg, quad and glute engaged. That stabilizes your asana and warrior. Releasing out. Hands come down. Left leg back. Your lower one. Get that chaturanga up dog. And you're tucking the toes to take down dog. Again, you could kneel on this down dog. You could go child pose on this down dog. Or you might be fired up for the most awesome power yoga and you're pushing into those handstands already, right there. You're going to fly out of the next warrior series if you choose. When that leg pendulums back, you might choose to just let it do a little lift off. All right. I am sucking wind, so this is awesome. Let's do this thing. Soften those knees, look to those hands. Step walk or jump those feet out. Sweep from the floor. Into that Utkatasana, right there, and exhale, Samastiti. Here comes round two. You can do traditional warriors or flying warriors. Here we go. Sweep the chair. Exhale, fold. Half lift. Releasing the plank. Hands down. Feet back. Chaturanga and flowing that on the inhale up, up. Tuck the chest down, up. Right leg warrior. A little lift that hand sweeping through. Exhale, rise. Strong left quad, you're there. Make your choices coming off. Hands are down, right legs back, and you're flowing through. Up dog, tuck the toes, take down dog. Left side warrior, a little lift, sweep through, exhale, inhale, rise, just like. Let that breath lift you, hold there right there, and that leg can pendulum out. Hands down, left leg swings up, and away you go. Up dog, and tuck the toes, take down dog. Or you could choose kneeling down dog because we have three more of those left and you're going to love them or you might not, but they're only three. So stay positive. You do not have to fly. You do not even have to do the warriors. You can stay kneeling and take other choices right now. Finishing this B, soften those knees, lift to the hands, step walk or jump out. Exhale, sweep, sweeping off and Utkatasana. There you go, sit in it, sit. Exhale, Samastiti. Nicely done. And sweep and chair. Number three, exhale, fold. Half lift. Releasing the plank, hands to feet back. Chaturanga up dog. Tuck the toes, take down dog. Rise side warrior, go get it, you can do it. Step two, exhale, inhale, rise. All the time in the world, feel that powerful left leg. Release out, hands down, right legs out of there. Up dog, tuck the toes, down dog, left leg warrior, sweep that foot through, you can feel powerful, right leg quad engagement, releasing out, hands are down, left legs back, nice, and tuck the toes, take down dog, or kneeling down dog, full breath engagement, especially feel on the bottom of the exhale, get all that air out, if you are really, really getting towards the peak, don't do open mouth breaths, big ones. <sighs> Your body needs that oxygen, and we have two more of those B sun salutations. We're gonna do these. Okay, let's go. Soften those legs, look to the hands, step, walk, or jump. Exhale, sweep, right in there. Finish it off with katasana. 
Exhale, some is DG. Nicely done. Here we go. Sweep and chair. Exhale, fold. Half lift. Release into plank. Chaturanga and up dog. Tuck the toes, take down dog. Right side warrior. A little lift and you Exhale, step, inhale, rise. Releasing out. Hands are down. Right legs out of there. Nicely done. Tuck the toes, take down dog. Left side up. A little lift. Sweep that leg through. And you're up. All the time in the world, I hope. Releasing out. Hands are down. Left knees back. Up dog. Tuck the toes. Down dog. Kneeling down dog. Open mouth breath. We are sweating out here. I, I know you are too. Very physically challenging. So don't feel bad about taking those knees. We've got one more left. Make this one your best one. I'm wishing you all the luck. I'm wishing me all the luck. Soften those knees. Look to the hands. Step, walk, or jump. Get ready to sweep out. Woo. Nicely done. And exhale, Samastichi. Last one, best one. Bring the hands together. Place them on your forehead. Take a breath and an affirmation. Inhale those hands up. Take an open mouth breath. All right. We've got the last Sunday. And then we get to do wonderful things. Sweep a chair. Exhale, fold. One breath and one more. Half lift. Release the plank. Up dog, inhale. Tuck the toes, down dog, exhale. Right side, one more. Inhale, step through, exhale, inhale, rise. We'll take an extra breath here. Set up for that flight if you want. Here we go, hands are down on the exhale. Toes take down dog. Left side warrior. A little lift. Exhale, step. Inhale, rise. Take an extra breath there. Set up. Exhale, then release. Left leg goes back. Nice. Tuck the toes, take that down dog position. We need a little rest. So we're going to come right out of this. Soften those legs, look to the hands. Step work or jump out. Sweep off. And Samastichi. Nice. We're going to step right back, keep that right leg there, and we're going to lower down and drop to that knee. Because while we're resting, we're going to stretch that needy hamstring. So lower back and let that chest stay toward that hamstring. Start with the gaze up, and then later, as the hamstring says, it's really feeling the pressure drop to head towards the knee. If you are a split person, you are already going for that. That back leg is back there and you're working that split line. Breathing. Anything in between hamstrings are a lifetime battle. I can see Catherine's back there battling her battle. Melissa's up here with splits like me. I did this when I was a kid, so that's a slight advantage. So just anywhere in between. But you've got to change those hamstrings. They'll be, they'll make you old. And you don't want to be old. That's why you're in yoga. Fountain of youth right here. Plus you get a rest. All right, plant the hands, work those hips up. Tuck in that left leg, bring that right leg back. Take it in the sky because it feels nice. You can flex the foot, you can even bend that foot towards the left side. Push yourself through that pocket in the arms. You want to have that pressure in the base of the palms. Nice, there you go, Catherine. And so you're able to really rotate them with the head through there. You can even look off of this side and see your foot right there. And you're like, oh, hello, foot. <laughs> nice. nice to see you back there. Step that down. And let's take the left leg and go for that hamstring stretch on the left. So a little lift, step through in that lunge. Drop that right knee down. Hello, left hamstring. Drop out to your splits if that Lunging stretch is not enough. Sometimes on hamstring stretches, just close your eyes and breathe and think positive thoughts. If you've ever been on a beach, now's the time to remember that because it was a very happy time. Or in the mountains. Five to seven breaths. Try and feel that full cycle of Ujjayi. 
always every asana in yoga, your goal is to make a full ujjayi breath once you're in the asana of the pose. So this is a hamstring stretch pose. Releasing out, plant those hands, lift those hips up, tuck in that right toe, and you're gonna bring that left leg all the way out, kick it up in the sky, three-legged. If you want to have the open hip, let that leg fall towards your right side, push your hip through that pocket in the arms, a lot of pressure in the base of the palm keeps you through that pocket, and you can see your foot over there. If you're a wild thing person, we could have done wild thing. We're not doing wild thing. Don't flip. <laughs> I command you not to do that. We'll do wild thing later. Well, we did do it on the right side, so we can't do it on the left. That's just the way it is. You're right, left, right. You bring that foot down. Pedal those feet out. Nicely done. We've got a nicely stretched hamstring. Soften those legs. Walk those feet up to the hand. Let's exhale, find strength in your base, and inhale all the way vertical. Because we now are ready to do our standing asana poses. Go ahead and come forward. And we're going to start by right into eagle. So you're going to cross the arms, and you're going to take right over left first. So your right hand's here, and you're crossing it over your left, getting a connection right at the elbows, bend in. Wrap that up, and you're there. Maybe. Unless you like legs. If you like eagle legs, you better get going. You're going to crouch down so that there's less distance for the crossover. You're going to find that drishti, cross those legs over. Opposite left leg to the right arm is a little more balancing. And then tuck that foot up behind. Breathe. Push on that standing left foot big toe. Make that happen. Come on, come on. <laughs> Breathing. Hold on to those arms. We only do things for about three breaths. Step on down. Keep the arms. Keep the arms. Press upper range, a little lift off. We only do things for about three breaths because we're doing yoga in 50 minutes. And so we want to do a lot of things and we only have two or three breaths. And release out. The good part about that is if you hate eagle, it's going to be over really fast. So here you go, left side's up. Left arm's up, we did the right side. You didn't do it the right way, slip it out. You got you to be a little personally responsible for some of this stuff. So here you go, you've got your left arm down in there. You're going for that crouch. You could just do that little tuck and crouch there. If you're just learning eagle, that's good. If you're going for advanced, cross it over and toe tap. That's really good. Drishti right there, some spot right off your arm. You can see any spot on the floor will do. Tuck that foot up, breathe strong, breathe stronger. Big toe, big toe going. That's three to five of my breaths. I hope it's yours. <laughs> Step on out, side to side, sway, take those arms out, find that upper range. You can add even a crescent flavor if you've got some high confidence on that. Really pushing those elbows into that zone. And exhale, release out. <sighs> Nicely done. So that sets the shoulders up for a lot of flexibility, and we've done hamstrings. We're ready to go into some pretty advanced other asanas. First, we're gonna do a four-point crossover. Taking that right leg, you're crossed over. Your foot is hooked and strong. Keeps that leg strong, your hand's gonna be here, here, here for a prayer. Lowering, lowering, lowering. You're lowered down. You can hold right there. If you can get those hands to the floor, your options just increased for balancing. You've got a drishti right out there. And I'm going to show you the balance because some people in my advanced class could do this. I'll turn sideways. Your leg, your ankle is on that armpit and your knee is on this armpit. You can just stay there and stretch that hip right here. The balance comes, you're looking to the floor and you're going to lean into those arms and pick that back foot up. You might try a teapot if balancing's not in your, <laughs> not your cup of tea. You could just lower and touch the head to the floor and tuck that leg up. That's another choice. Coming out of this, just unwind and bring yourself all the way back up vertical. To close off, bring the hands up. And exhale, samasthiti. Nicely done on that. A lot of choices. We're in power yoga. So we're going to go for the other side. So here goes the left leg. The foot is going to stay strong. The leg stays strong. This leg has to be engaged. It is like new weight. You're going to go down. You're not going to make it. Come on, you can do it. Find the drishti. 
allow yourself to lower. And be grateful we're not doing shoot the duck. All right, you're coming down more and more. You can hold right there. If you can get your arms to the floor and really drop down, is your knee close to your armpit on that left side and on that right side? Give yourself a little distance. Make sure you have plenty of mat. Because if you fall over, you won't want to conk your head. I don't know. You can have a block here. That would be really nice. But too late for that. So you're going to use that tricep. Add that weight. Drishti, drishti, right there on the floor, just like Bakasana. If you don't do Bakasana, then maybe you should try this. <laughs> anyway, or you can do the lowering, lowering. Let the forehead come to the floor. Pick that toe up and wave it around. Go, ha, 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 ha. Nice job. And releasing out. You see I'm gracefully just coming out of that. I'm not going to reverse it. <laughs> not today. It's been too much vacation time. Thanks, how's on this DT? Nice job on that. Great for the hips. Arms feel very powerful. We're going to add our side angle and triangle poses. Okay. So we're going to start with the right side. We're coming in. And for triangle, this leg is similar to warrior two, only that leg stays straight. And when you're doing warrior two, just hold that for right now. When you're doing that, you want to feel really strongly this back inner shoulder. So you're wanting to feel this shoulder blade really powerful, stabilizing you there. And as you do that, and that strong left quad, add this reach, and then you're going to flip those arms so that you've taken what was horizontal and you've gone vertical. You can add more intensity by holding onto the leg. It sometimes collapses the shoulder, but you make it down to the toe, keeping this foot open, add more distance, and the final touch is the, gaze goes, the gazing drishti goes up to that roof. If you feel wobbly, you got to flex those quads and hamstrings, stabilizing it. And we're going to come out of this and do warrior three, because we can, and this is power yoga. Soften that knee, find that drishti out in front of your mat, and exhale all the air out, three, two, one, lift off to warrior three. Go, go, get it, get it. Add those arms over the head if you want. Kicking that back leg, keep it strong. And bring the legs together. Someone's keeping nicely done. Excellent. Anything goes. Here we go, left side. So step that left leg out. You've got this warrior. The um, right leg's this direction and the left leg's that direction. As you're looking forward, that back shoulder on that on that side is your one that's giving you power. Keep both legs isometrically contracted. Here goes the reach. Flip the arms, one vertical. There you go. See if you can lower into that. Try and keep that back hip open. Maybe you're going for the toe. At the gaze, going up. Keep those legs strong. Come on, three breaths. Now you know what's coming. We're going to soften that knee, bring that arm around. We're going into the lunge. We're going to go lift off right into warrior three. Exhale, three, two, one. Inhale, go. Kick that back leg. Get that front leg straight. Dig that toe. You got it. Nail it. And stand down. Nicely done. Very well done. So now we're going to add on the side angle with a bind and a bird paradise. I first learned this in Melissa's class because I was at her class and I was like, oh. and then forevermore I went after it. So I just kudos to Melissa. So Bird of Paradise is starts with side angle and you just hang out in side angle if you don't want to fly like a bird. So we're going to take, we're going to come back to this right side and your side angle is like this. And so you might do that and just hang there, but there's one addition to this. Your hand is wrapped behind you. So you've got that left hand behind you, you're hanging out on that right leg there. And you can take the gaze up right there. But since that hand's over there, we're going to go into the bind, and we're going to lift off. So I'm going to show you from this side, and Melissa can show you from the front, because that's way cool. And she, she's got more grace than me. So that right hand is going to go under, interlock the fingers. Maybe try straightening that leg. Find out if that's going to work for you. If it's not working right now, lower your expectations. 
bring that other foot in. You're bringing in whatever foot that is over there. <laughs> you're lowering down, and you're going to stand up on that foot, just like sun salutations. Powerful exhale. Inhale. Get up, get up, get up. Go. Drifty straight to the floor. Straight to the floor. Keep that drifty right there. Straight to the floor. You got it, you got it. Straight to the floor. Get that leg straight and straighten that. Leg is in the sky. And if you're really good, you can bend and flex the foot, which is a waving bird pattern. <laughs> we are friendly. Yeah. Nice. Well, well then. All right, that was your right side. So here we go. Same thing on the left, anything in between. I have people that have been working on this and all they can do is go like this. That's good, they're on their way. So, just try, whatever you can do. First thing is just side angle with the arm wrap behind. So you're on your left, right arm's wrapped behind. You're just holding on that, you're looking for a good posture. You might go, okay, I'm ready. And so, here we are. You're gonna wrap this hand underneath and grab the fingers. Here you go, exhale. Hold right there. Maybe straighten that leg. It helps you know your range of motion. Hands free flexibility, shoulder flexibility. All part of this thing. Right leg's coming in right there. Tap that left toe. It's got to go up. Straight into the floor. Don't look anywhere to the floor. Strong inhale. On that inhale, lift up that air. It helps. Everything helps. Okay, you got there? If you start looking up, you'll probably start doing something like this. So stop that. Look back down. Lock yourself in there. Get that leg straight. Try to bend straight. Even if it's like this, bend straight. You did enough. You're good. And step on out. Nicely done. Bring, them, that's true. Bring those hands up. We need a positive affirmation. Bring them to your forehead. Close your eyes. And tell yourself, I am awesome. Or whatever you need to feel that your sacrifice of yoga today is a wonderful tribute to where you're at in your fitness life. I have a lot of sweat, so I'm feeling this is really, really well done. I hope you are too. Take one more inhale, take the hands up. Do an open mouth breath. Excellent. We need to get ourselves down to the floor. So we're just gonna do an Ashtanga flow. Come to the front of your mat. This is your last one. Inhale up. We're gonna do a salutation. Exhale, fold. Half lift. Releasing the plank. Hands are down. Seat are going back. You're working that chaturanga up dog. Nicely done. And exhale the child's pose. Meaning take those knees wide. This is a well-earned child's pose. You might go for melting heart. If your heart can make it there. And you want it. Your shoulders certainly have the heat to allow that release. Full exhale of air. Feel that emptiness. Gives you more of a release. If you've turned one cheek, turn the other cheek. You're going to try it on both sides. I can't do both sides because I have a microphone. But you need that side by side, ambidextrous. We've got a few more seated poses to do. These are going to be more aggressive than my regular yoga class. Bring your body up, sit down in the, on your mat. And bring your legs up here, and we're going to immediately go to Navasana. If you wanted other flavors on a seated, like a Marichyasana, go to the other class. Well, we're going to take some power options that are different here. So we're going for Navasana. In a power point, or in power yoga, you might release with the hands, holding on. You could option out, toe taps down. If your quads go into a Charlie horse, my quads Charlie horse, it's a lifetime complication. So, nicely done. And now we're going to go for a Navasana balance. So allow the uh, left leg to come down and take that right leg and just let it rest. You might be holding on at the calf muscle, you might be holding on at the toes, anywhere in between. And open that foot up wider and pull the opposite leg, kind of letting yourself sit up. Use those shoulder blades, feel that empowerment of the back and shoulder. You can take an opposite viewpoint. It's the best one. <laughs> Over the bent leg. Nice, bring that foot down, and we're gonna switch it out. So you're going for that left leg. You're adding that extension. You're looking over the right shoulder. You're opening up. You're using the shoulder blades. We're still Ujjayi breathing to the bitter end of yoga. 
the beautiful and the yellow. Bring that down, bring that in. And now we're going to roll out the spine. You're going to want to tuck the chin, and as you roll back, keep the chin tucked, so it's roll it up. Curves the spine, the feet go over the head on the way back, keep that chin tucked, and then the feet come towards the front of your mat on the way up. Try that three or four times, feel the spinal roll out of those muscles to the side of your spinal cord. And then we're gonna add the balancing challenge. So, pause right here, tap out. The balancing challenge is when you come up, you nail Navasana. So you go down, tuck, come up, Navasana. Use the belly muscles. If you didn't get it that time, try again. You can do it. Roll back, up, now. Use them, contract the abs, it'll nail it. And then you can try the other challenges. Right side kick, and down. Roll back, here comes the left side. Left side kick. Try it one more time. Maybe you can do both sides. That is really, you're gonna be really soft if you do both. You roll, you come up, strong belly. And I'm even off my mat. I have the disadvantage of a mat. Nice. Nice challenge. Good job. Bring those legs in. And we are going to do just a couple more um, finishing things. We want to do bridges. And so the easiest bridge is just a pelvic lift with the hands clasped underneath. Pinkies pushed into the floor. I'll let Catherine do that. You plant the feet. And Melissa's going to do wheel. So Melissa will be doing wheels, um, which is just a back bend. And the pelvic floor lifts. The hands clasp underneath, and the pinkies push in to the floor. So you're wanting to really have that strong quad action. If you can, you're trying to get the feet straight up. I'm fixing you. Good job. And you're really feeling the shoulders. You can even squiggle the shoulders to get them underneath more. Really push through. On the wheel, you can actually push through your legs, straighten your legs more, and really push yourself over. See how good she is. She's awesome. So either way, nice bridge. Bring that back down to the floor and take a happy baby moment right here because um, this might be the only happy baby we have time for and I love happy babies. If you want to just stay here, you can. You don't need to do the second bridge. If you want that second bridge, you need to plant and go. Feet are down, hips are lifting on the pelvic lift. Bridge is happening maybe over here or you could have chosen tabletop, kind of a middle thing. Just three to five breaths, and I'm already at three, so check, done. <laughs> Lower yourself back down. That one was a little shorter, and allow yourself to release. And we're going to be, our final asana is going to be an inversion. You can take any inversion you want. If you are in my power yoga class and you're working on handstands, you can go to the wall, go backwards from the wall, and you're putting your hands towards the floor, you're about two feet out, you just take your legs up, and you can just hold right there. Now, I tell you, the place that I started doing this was kids yoga, you think? So if the little kids can do it in kids yoga, it's the safest way to work on a handstand and check your strength. If you wanna do a headstand, what do we, do we wanna check your headstands? The headstand, you're gonna make a, ba a basket, a pocket, and you're going to line up your, she's lining up her distance for her elbows. Then you're going to make a basket, and you're going to put your head in that basket. And that basket is big, because your head is not going to fit in this kind of basket. It has to be a big basket, and you're working into that basket. You get your hips up over the head. You might want your elbows in just a little bit more, because that gives you a power to push onto the forearm. And then you can teeter-totter the legs up. If you take like one leg up at a time, much less risk, because you can always drop that to the floor if you didn't like it or you were worried, or you can push yourself and press all the way up. How are we, Catherine? Do you do this? Oh, I've never done this. She's never done this. <laughs> we have a nuevita. We're going to work this. Oh, wait, you! You little fitness girl. <laughs> now she has, I'll pick on her. She has a bit of an arch here because her arms are slightly wide and her ponytail is in the way, so she didn't get a good enough basket. But that's okay because she worked through it and she has a lot of awareness and she's able to compensate by her muscle and um, body awareness. So that's awesome. Again, Melissa is showing these different variations. These are my favorite things. So I'll join her. And that is once you get yourself up in that handstand, you bend one foot, this foot, the lats are working. This foot over here, the forearm is pressing. 
And when your legs are out like that, you have a huge amount of weight release. When the legs are up like this, there's a lot more weight on the hip. And when they come out, it's not there. One of my favorite things is to open up my lower spine by spinning this leg all the way around and even crossing the foot. I love that. And then the other side, rotating, crossing the foot. So those are just some extra flavors. Again, at some point in time, I'd like to do a whole class on handstands and legs flipping around like that. But no time for that today. It's just for the advanced people to have a challenge. We're moving now to our final stavasana. So I need you to lay down and find that closing asana. The positions that you would want to achieve are replacing and a, a lifting and resetting of the spinal column. However many times you need, take, take the legs out wide so that your heels are just barely on your mat and your feet flop out. We're very relaxing for the hip socket and the arms can be wide. You might have to reset that head or shoulders. The mouth is now no longer closed. The ujjayi, or ujjayi breath has ended. Your mouth is even slightly open, allowing a free-flowing, deep pattern of breathing with no thought as to what's in or out at all. The eyes are closed, and with the jaw slightly open, all jaw tension releases. You should feel this somewhat melting sensation of the facial tissues in deep relaxation. It takes effort to inhale, but on the exhale, it seems to go on forever and ever and ever as the air just keeps floating out. And during that process, you trigger relaxation through the body by mentally allowing a work through from the mind down the extremities because of the fitness challenge of power yoga you have a lot more connection when you reach muscle. The physical body is weakened from that output, and the spirit and soul are completely arising and empowered. The ability to take positive thoughts. in your life, to push off the inflow or incoming of negativity and replace it with light and positive can be very much firmed up at the point of Shavasana. Oftentimes negative things that have happened, we've all had things happen in our life and tend to keep crawling back into our active space. Sometimes I take and turn my fingers to the floor and with my fingertips touching the floor, I commit to release those negative events, negative things, negative people, send them to the floor, to the basement, to the lower echelons of my life to be committed and walled off and staying there. And as I affirm and set that up, I find myself ready then at the right time to change my fingertips to an upward position, allowing light, goodness, help from above, help from beyond me,
bringing the hands inward, rotate inward, place the hands on the belly, picking and setting up for an appreciation of the body you have, the complexity of all the functions in your body. Bring the left hand to the heart, connecting with that chakra, left hand on the heart, right hand on the belly. Bring both hands upward, to the words of ceiling, matching up the left palm and the right palm, putting a little pressure there, balancing left side and right side, logical and artistic, bend at the elbows, let the thumbs come to the forehead. With that position of Anjali Mudra, thumbs on the forehead, taking a moment to honor your mind, your intelligence, that essence that makes you uniquely you, that provides direction in your actions and your thoughts and your decisions every day, and committing to have those be lined up in a way that you will find pleasing on the long term and in the short term. Bringing the thumbs to the chin, taking a moment there, you can feel the breath of life, a wonderful life is. Honor it. Know that there's always those who love you and who will miss you, who need you, and finding forgiveness within yourself if that's necessary, and asking for forgiveness from those who might be out there that need that, and deciding to make positive comments with the words that come out of your mouth each day, and Never forget to smile. Bring the thumbs to the middle of the torso, down by the heart and the lungs, empowering those two important functions of your body to be strong. Take a deeper breath. Feel the power of your lungs. Feel the power of your heart and the gentleness of your heart to help you make the best decisions that you can with that direction. And even instruct your heart and your systems, your T cells to be stronger, your immune system to defend you against whatever you might come into contact with to help you be strong each day. Take your right arm and inhale it straight up over the head. Tuck your feet up and let your knees drop to the right side. Rolling over into that fetal curl, finding a foundation there maybe a connection with your ancestors, the dear mother that you have, the family you have, the grandparents that you have. Bring yourself all the way up into that seated position that we started with, relaxed, the hands on the knees, the chin down, closing the eyes, feeling a final affirmation for this yoga. Bring the hands together in Anjali Mudra. Take a deep inhale, let's finish with an Om. Thank you for joining us in yoga. May our hearts be as one. Namaste.